It seems completely normal. I thought everyone did it as a part of their childhood. Did you speak in tongues? Yeah, since I was eight years old. I had always been raised in a Christian household and I didn't know any different when I was eight that we were going to a Pentecostal church. It's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, there's a lot of happiness and fun and the joy of, of the Lord is, is revealed. You write about it uh, quite movingly, actually. You, you talk about being on fire for God and mm. how beautiful believing is. Can you explain some of what that beauty is? It is. It's a very, it's a very beautiful thing. It's a very simplistic story to believe, but it's all about um, a very personal and intimate relationship with God. You know, you're part of a, a big group that is there to save the world and is there to, you know, they've, Hillsong, for example, has always portrayed themselves as, as a really fun church, very contemporary, and the music's great, you know, who wouldn't want to be there? And it was all I'd known for, for these years, and then I just started getting thoughts in my head. These people are crazy. What was it uh, that you suddenly saw that you thought was crazy? <sighs> I watched, I would watch people and it looked like they were participating in some kind of charade. And I, I didn't know how that was possible. Also the tongues didn't make sense. Like I thought, that's really gibberish, that can't be real. Ba 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 is what you hear. Yeah. And I thought, no, something's, something's not right here. When you were 24, you got a social uh, work degree and you ended up doing some work with the Salvos. And very interesting phrase, you said I was uh, detoxed from toxic Christianity. Yeah. That's a very strong phrase, toxic Christianity. Is that how you view Pentecostalism I, at I, that point? I have to say I do now. I spent five years working alongside Salvation Army officers who have a completely different outlook on what Christianity is. And they're very, very humble people. And they're very, very committed to serving the community. And how did you see that as different to what you saw at Hillsong? The Salvation Army are very much geared towards charity and gospel. And Hillsong was very much geared towards money, recruitment and fundraising. I want people to be able to be animated about their worship. And I love walking into the six o'clock service and then bang, getting hit by the presence of God. It's cool. Tell someone next to you it's cool. It was 2002, and in fact it was a speech Brian made to the congregation, an, an important speech, which really started your, I think it's fair to say, your path to disillusionment. Can yeah. you talk us through that? I went to see uh, Pastor Brian talk about his father having been removed from ministry. And he proceeded to talk about, you know, having to have confronted his father over a serious, what he called a serious moral failure. These were allegations of sexual offences against teenage boys, which was never actually named on the day. He said it was a serious moral failure. He'd had to confront his father about it. His father had confessed. The national executive had then taken away his credentials, investigated and taken away Houston Senior's uh, credentials. And that um, Brian Houston himself was crushed and he asked for the congregation to pray for his family, for his wife and his children and the congregation did. They stood up and they applauded him and that was the end of that speech. There was no reference to the people that had been abused or whose Absolutely lives had been damaged? Absolutely no reference to the victims. There was no stance taken on child sexual assault or child abuse of any form or care for children. Uh, there was no standing up and saying, look, we will not tolerate this in our congregation. And in fact, what it made me wonder was, if this is how they treat these kinds of issues on the most public level that they've got, how are they treating them on smaller, more, you know, in more private arenas? You raise a number of questions about Hillsong Church, and one of those is about prosperity theology, which is probably best summed up in the title of this book by Brian Houston, You Need More Money. Can you explain to us what prosperity theology is? Prosperity theology is the belief, the absolute belief that according to the Bible, according to the verses in the Bible, God wants you to be rich. He wants you to have prosperity in every area of your life, particularly your finances. And that to not be that way is actually to be disobedient to the word of God. Why would God want you to be rich? What does that achieve? 
you know, if the Christians can have all the wealth, then they can redistribute it as they wish to, you know, to the areas of poverty that they want to distribute it to, the areas of need that they see fit. There's various ways that we are able to fund the various projects and community programs that we're involved in, and they include everything from private enterprise to the church's own resources to members of the congregation to government grants. 60% of the total income goes towards helping people directly. From your viewpoint, is that the whole picture? It's very abstract. 60% of their money goes towards helping people directly. That could mean any number of things. Do you suspect that under closer scrutiny that there is something questionable about the way Hillsong operates? I, I can't argue that there's anything questionable. What I can argue that is questionable is, is the lack of transparency. So, you know, as much as they might say their books are open, everybody that I've interviewed who has asked to have a look at the books is told that they've got a bad attitude or they've got doubts and therefore we get back to the story of sin and doubt. So, You also talk about uh, Bobby Houston and how you came to question some of her values. What is it according to Bobby and the teachings of Hillsong that kingdom women should aspire to be? Bobby Houston, who's Brian's wife, is the women's leader for Hillsong and she teaches from a proverb, uh, from the book of Proverbs, number 31, which is uh, about a devoted wife. So a kingdom woman should be a devoted wife. She should be a helper and a companion, which is what Eve was created for, for Adam. She should at all times be supportive of her husband's goals. That is what a kingdom woman is there for. And if she doesn't have a husband, she should be in training to get a good husband so that she can fulfil his goals. In 2005, you went to the uh, Colour Your World Hillsong mm. Women's Conference, and this is really the moment where you decided you want to write a book. What happened there? Hillsong, Hillsong are running the charity Compassion, which is on a child sponsorship model, of, and, and they're promoting very heavily child sponsorship in Uganda. And uh, they had a big photo of an African child with his hands behind. And the caption was, will you be my sponsor? Like, at what point is this exploitation? It's very clearly people trying to do something that will further the advancement of fundamentalist Christianity. This orphanage in Uganda is explicitly set up for the children to learn how to be Pentecostals with hopes that one day there'll be a Pentecostal leader in Uganda. So you're suggesting that the Hillsong is primarily set up for recruitment? And for, fundraising. And fundraising for itself, uh, which would imply the faith that is apparently at its core is not necessarily a genuine faith. I found a, a very strong pattern in what happens when people show resistance. So everything's happy and everything's fine when you don't show any kind of resistance. If you show resistance to the pastors, the leadership, the program, the teaching, you dealt with very severely. What does severely mean? Well, you know, in cases there are people who, who have been told that they're demonic. And generally what has happened is that it, once people are showing enough resistance, that is going to need to be quelled immediately. So they're often ostracised and other congregants are told not to have anything to do with them because they've got doubts, you know. They're, they're not for us, they must be against us. It's a very fundamentalist, polarised point of view. Okay. When you told Brian and Bobby that you wanted to write this book, because you did, what, what happened? What was the response? So I got a response from the general manager of Hillsong, who said that I had caused significant disruption, that I was never to go on Hillsong premises again, and that, no, they won't be helping me with the book. Uh, I should point out that we have invited Brian and Bobby Houston to respond to uh, Tanya's interview, and uh, they have a an open forum on this show if they wish to take it. This is the first interview you've done, so the, the wave is about to break over you, mm. the consequences of your book. Are you sure you've done the right thing? I know absolutely that I've done the right thing. Every time I watch some Hillsong tape, um, I'm convinced because when I started out I thought, ooh, where will I research? What will I do? And now all I have to do is, is watch Hillsong's own promotional material and they will say to you explicitly that they want to build more buildings, but they need more money. Natani, thank you for speaking so clearly tonight. Appreciate thank you very it. much, Andrew.